everyone, welcome to Virtual Veg Fest Live. We're really happy you're here with us on this Saturday. I am Helene and I am your host, which I don't think I've ever said before. Thank you to the Plant Based Network for powering Virtual Veg Fest Live and virtualvegfest.com, where you can shop and support all our vendors. And if you like prizes, we have a raffle copter. So just go to any of our sites like virtualvegfest.com, click on the little want to win a prize link and enter a raffle copter to win prizes from Orgain, Follow Your Heart, Hodo Foods, and Crafters Organics. And a big thanks to them for donating monthly prizes to us that you can win just for doing like simple things like liking or subscribing to the Virtual Veg Fest YouTube. You get entered. Wow, awesome. And then if you donate to our Pass the Buck campaign, this month is Blind Spot Sanctuary of North Carolina for every dollar that you enter, every dollar that you donate, I should say, and we donate all the funds to them, we'll even eat the fees, we'll enter you to win an Orgain prize back. And thanks to Orgain for sponsoring our lives this month. We really appreciate them. We are going to go back into the realm of vegan athletes. And this is the first because we have we have a, like an athlete who's won medals. <laughs> well, we've had, I mean, Erin Fergus is a, is a bodybuilding athlete, but this is a little different. This is, you know, I want Ramona to share with you like who and what she is and what she's doing. And what's really cool for me is she's where I grew up. She's, she's on Long Island. <laughs> I'm from Long Island, born and raised. So she, I hear the accent in talking with her. So I'm going to bring her on. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the little box and we'll definitely get to them. So here we go. Hey, Ramona, how are you? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me, Helene. Oh, you're welcome. I'm really glad that you're here. So I want to throw this at you because I want everyone to know <laughs> what you do because I didn't even get a chance. I wanted to talk about like your raw vegan even. I have so many. I have, I have my own questions. <laughs> so please share like everything about you. The floor is yours. Oh, sure, yes. So I've been uh, vegan since... 2006 and I became vegan because of the animals. That's why I became vegan. Okay. I always been athletic um, since a child doing tap, ballet, toe, jazz, outdoors, you know, just being, uh, you know, real coordinated and balanced and I enjoy it. Um, I definitely um, love sports. You know, I love I play tennis, I love, learn a little bit of golf. You know, so I definitely love different types of sports. So I'm really a huge advocate. Love gymnastics, you know, watch gymnastics. And um, so, yeah, so weightlifting came into my life because I did uh, did CrossFit in, in classes. And I did that only for a short period of time, CrossFit. And and uh, weightlifting is something I've been, uh, at, been at since uh, 2013, uh, just starting out in weightlifting in 2013. And I've competed in uh, competitions. Uh, first competition was in uh, 2016. Um, I took uh, second at my first um, Masters Nationals in 2016. Uh, 2017, I competed at the American Masters Nationals and also plus uh, second there. And I've also participated in the Masters World Championships. I have took um, two gold medals in the Masters Pan Am Games. One was held in Gaspar, Quebec. Uh, that was in 2018 and, and 2019. I also repeated that championship with the gold medal, um, and that was in Orlando. I didn't compete in any uh, international competitions in 2020. I did compete March of 2020 at a local meet, and I came one kilo shy of coming to the national record in the in the snatch. So in Olympic weightlifting, you have a snatch. Uh, that's one of the lifts. And in the other lift, it's a combo lift. It's a clean and a jerk. And you, in this sport, you need to, not just strength, but you need to have agility, flexibility, mobility, uh, speed, coordination. You need all of that. Um, so it does have, it's like being a gymnast doing um, 
weightlifting. Put it that way. <laughs> so it's 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 a very unique sport. I like the weightlifting because it's very um, it's a mental game. It's very mental, and it just requires you to just be very focused. And I like the challenge, and I love weightlifting. My competitions that are coming up would be coming up mid March at the. Uh, Masters Nationals that will be held in Orlando based on COVID restrictions. If the Nationals are unable to be held at, you know, during mid March, it's supposed to be then uh, will be in August. Austin. That will be in Orlando. Second competition will be the World um, Championships that will be online, and that will be in May of this year, and then. Uh, August would be the Pan Am Games, so I have a chance of becoming a three-time champion at that at that competition. And uh, they have another uh, American Masters sometime in November, and then next year, not this year, this year is supposed to be the um, World Master Games, which is very similar to uh, the Olympic Games, but it's Masters ages 35 and over. And that was was supposed to be held this year. So it's it's going to be uh, most likely to be held next year in 2022. Yeah. And that's, that's what we hope. So, so for those, so those of us who don't know anything, right? Like I've watched some of this, but tell us like, are there weight classes? I mean, tell us everything about the sport. (laughs) Definitely. Um, so there's different categories of the sport. There's youth athletes, um, uh, which is the, like I guess between ages ages of 11 to age um, like 17 uh, of that nature. I think the senior competition could be um, like late teens up until any age. Basically, you can compete as a senior any age. It's it's much more a uh, rigorous requirement. Um, that's also known as like the open um, in, in um, for USA weightlifting. Uh, masters weightlifting is age 35 and over. And so there's different requirements. Yes, within all those categories I just mentioned, right? Youth, senior, and masters. There are different uh, weightlifting categories and, and different age uh, ranges and the weightlifting in terms of um, it's measured in, in kilos, it's kilos. Um, and yes, in the USA, um, I mean, you know, I the plates are measured. Some gyms are measured have the plates in pounds. Some gyms have the measure measurements in uh, kilos. But every competition, every competition, whether it's uh, a local competition or international competition, the weights are always in kilos. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to you competing, like tell us tell us more like about that. Like like do you do both? Like the snatch and and I I'm pretty yeah. sure I think I know oh, what oh, you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Like one's a solid a solid lift up. Oops, there goes my thing. Lift oh. up. <laughs> and, the snatch um is um the fastest um like the fastest lift right. that you can go, okay? And, and the other lift is the clean and jerk, so it requires two components to complete the lift. If you miss the clean, you can't do the jerk, you can make the clean, but if you miss the jerk, the lift uh, does not count. Yes, the snatch is a wider grip um, um, in terms of the arm length, okay? And something in the leg too, in the legs, and then this, the clean and jerk is more of a narrow grip, narrow grip, and same thing, you can open your arms up when you have the clean, it's here, and then you can move up, move the side, your arms to the side a little bit, but in, and that's more for the jerk, when you want to do a jerk. And there's different types of jerk. There's split jerk, there's power jerk, there's a squat jerk, there's different types of jerk. So based on your weightlifting experience, some people you prefer one jerk over the other, but you can do either one, and it's, it's still um, going to work. So... So in the snatch, been just my best snatch is 60 kilos. My best clean and jerk is about like 76 kilos. And my best clean 
uh, is 78 kilos and my best jerk is 80 is 80 kilos um, and like I said the, the stash is a wider uh, a grip so most like like most most you know lifters their snatch is going to be the kilos is going to be less because it's your if you're wider grip you know you have it's you have more advan it's more advantageous when your when grip is closer in because you're going to clean more it's easy based on science obviously so the snatch is usually maybe depending on the athlete but it's different it could be 15 to 30 kilos less than your um clean and jerk okay so can you take those kilos and turn them into pounds for us Americans? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. So um, definitely, it's it's definitely a conversion uh, a, a factor, and um, you know, like every all the athletes, um, when you're doing say two point two pounds, is one kilo. That's basically one kilo is equal to two point two pounds. Okay. That's how you do uh, conversions. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. I mean, that's so 80. I mean, that's that's over 160 pounds. Yeah. I don't want the point two. I don't feel like doing the math of the point two <laughs> part. But I mean, over 160 pounds. That's and, and what was your best? I mean, your best was 80, right? So my best uh, in terms of my, my best jerk mm -hmm. was um, 80 kilos. But the, what the, but the connection between when I do the clean and the jerk as a combo lift all in one shot, it was 76. Right. right. 76. And, and the judges, right. Cause the vegan meathead was on and he does that. So he said like, you have to like pause, right. For like, a, like some moment of time before you lift and the judges look for that. Right. Because when you have in the snatch, it's a wider grip like this, mm -hmm. right. A little snatch. So you have you can't you have to wait for the, the judges to tell you and then there's a buzzer. When you hear that buzzer, that means you you bring it down. Bring it down. Um and you know, it's you know, that's how it is. It's something with the when you, you clean the weight, then you jerk the weight up and you hold the weight and wait for the judges to tell you with the bell, the buzzer to put it down. Right. Is that an eternity? Uh, <laughs> it's like Ring the bell. Yeah. Ring the bell. You want, if you're on balance, you want to make sure that you can stay there because you have to be, you have to be balanced and then you bring the, you know, uh, the weight down. But if you, if you bend your arms, like if you do, let's say you're jerking, it goes like this. You have to have, it's one split and then you jerk it up like that. If your arms bend, that lift uh, does not count, even, even though it's over your head. Okay. Yeah, I know. I mean, with, with Daniel being on, I know a little bit. So how many, well, how many vegans have you competed with? That's a good question. I mean, um, I think it's not really publicized and, um, I, you know, I've, I really don't even know. I don't even know. And, um, I never asked. <laughs> Do you, are you out there? Like, I know like Daniel, like wear socks. I think that's stay vegan on them. Are you, are you letting people know that you're doing this based on a plant-based well, diet? I, I, wear, I wear different types of shirts and, you know, I do have um, some vegan shirts that says plant power, mm -hmm. uh, vegan athlete, you know, yes. You know, I, you know, I do that. And some people in the gym in the past have asked me, well, you know, they see the shirt, they ask me if I'm vegan and they says, well, how can you, you know, be strong and be vegan doing weightlifting? It's so much. How do you, how does your body maintain that? And, you know, I give them my spiel about it. <laughs> what do you say? I want to hear your spiel. What do I say? Yeah. So, you know, first I tell them I did it for the animals. That's the reason why I did the veganism. That's the first part of it. Right. And, and in terms of for health benefits, you know, it's just, I, I get my protein, um, from, from from plants, right? So plants, meaning I do I do I, I do wheatgrass, I do sprouting, uh, sprouting sprouting and uh, uh, wheatgrass and different types of sprouts, sprouts like pea sprouts, broccoli sprouts, uh, barley sprouts. They are, they have the highest uh, with the wheatgrass. I have the highest plant protein, and then it gives you a lot of quick energy. I like that. And for the fast 
um, for the slow burning energy, I would do you know, sweet potatoes, you know, yams, uh, brown rice, and uh, yeah, and then basically my um, protein, I, I do uh, make my my um, lentil burgers, lentil burgers. Uh, that's where I get uh, my protein from. If it's other than, you know, other than um, greens, I also get it from different types of nuts and seeds, different types of, you know, I do plant protein powders as well. Um, I'm, I use a few of them. And I'm, if I usually, I do that like in, the, like in the morning, put it into my oatmeal, if it's like a meal with almond butter, blueberries, mm. almond milk. And I put all my, maybe some supplements, like extra vitamin C or my B12, which is important for vegan to, um, you know, you need to have B12 in your, in your, in your diet since you don't uh, eat meat, you know, so that's important. I have a lot of, I drink a lot of water in between my workouts. I, I have coconut water as well, because that's very good, you know, for electrolytes and alkalizing the body and greens are good too for alkalizing your body as well, you know, the balance. And, uh, yeah, I make, I make my meals simple. I don't make it, you know, intricate. I don't make it difficult. It's very simple. Well, what's important is I love the fact that you just kind of mentioned all different foods and that all of them have protein in them, nuts, seeds, greens, sweet potatoes, the whole gamut, they all have protein. So there's, yeah. there's absolutely, there's, there's no way you're not getting enough protein to lift 160 plus pounds. It, it, does, it, it's, imp it's impossible to not get enough protein. If anything, people get too much protein and you don't have to get it. Lentils, lentil burgers, smoothies, protein powders. I mean, the protein powder is probably like putting you over your protein if, for the day based on like everything that you said that you're eating. So my protein powder has amino acids, so it has branched chain amino acids too, mm -hmm. uh, which, are, which are definitely helpful uh, to my training as well. For your recovery, right? Yes, recovery too, yeah. Also, yeah. Be, for, also for my recovery, um, you know, besides, you know, having a massage and doing hot, cold contrast, I do hot and cold contrast showers sometimes, you know, um, it's kind of weird, but, you know, I, I am getting I'm trying to gradually get accustomed to that because it's not my, <laughs> but it does, that does help with the contrast with recovery and having sleep, having an, the appropriate number of hours of sleep. Um, that's, that's definitely um, recovery there. And yeah. And after, depending on what my workout is like, like I do have a combination of protein and carbs as, um, um, as a recovery, you know, too, as well, sauna, massage, that too. Oh, that sounds wonderful. <laughs> Except for, you know, the the workout that you're doing that you need the sauna and the massage for. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really impressive, you know, Thank you. with, with what you're doing. And the, I had, I had more questions. If anyone has any questions, please feel, feel, feel free to ask. But Indra said, hi guys. So welcome. Thank you for joining us, Indra. We're glad that you're here. And anyone else, a lot of people have come on to the feed. They just haven't said anything. So you're, are you born and raised in New York? Yes, I am. Born, born and raised in, uh, originally from Queens, New York. Born in St. Albans, uh, okay. New York, American. Uh, my ancestry is from the Caribbean, uh, Barbados. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I was born in Plainview. <laughs> yes, and I yeah, so very well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, I mean... I left, I, I've been out of New York for a while now, but I mean, yeah, I, I'm good. <laughs> Great place to visit now. <laughs> and it's gotten way more of a funny thing about Long Island, even though it's like 40 minutes or I mean, you're even closer to Manhattan than I was. It just a train ride into the city where there's a lot of vegan food. Long Island up until recently really didn't have a lot of vegan options it was like like almost like a desert of not vegan options and it's really come around i mean food trucks and vegan exactly. restaurants and and there's so much food there now which you would have thought would have just gravitated from the city but we just have to go into the city to eat all that delicious food 
Yeah, yeah. I was just in uh, Franchia's and uh, I, I, with one of my uh, girlfriends um, this past week. Franchia's, yeah. And they're in the city, yeah. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah. I haven't been there. But you just have to, you can go. I, there's like um, one of the food trucks. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Matt's food truck. I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember the name of it right now. Oh, it completely the green, gone. The green. Yes, he's very yeah, he's he's very good. I like I like his food too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so it's that's pretty. I mean, he, he's doing a thing at the pizza place. Yeah, tomorrow uh, with, the, with brunch. Oh, the the, there's a brunch tomorrow, and oh, yeah, and it know. looks incredible. Sometimes you get I get a little envious <laughs> of, of menus, so it's really it's really neat. So let's talk about the way you reached out to me was that you are fundraising to be able to go to Japan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, nice. So let's talk about that so people can possibly help you. And then you get a whole other gear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like I said, with the COVID, they, proposed, they postponed it to another year. And I think so far, I think they, have, you know, they're thinking of doing that virtual too. I'm not sure. I think it's they're leading, depending on how the, how the COVID stands at that particular time. But, you know, definitely, um, if there are any donations to be, it'd be, it'd be just towards, you know, recovery, toward things that it can help me keep me injury free and just that type of support. Um, you know, if I need to travel, I don't know what the COVID situation would be like, where you have to get there maybe two weeks before to come, you know, the location and then how that's going to work out. So, you know, just the intricate potential things that you you gotta you know know about yeah you know, plan a plan b because you you know know how that's gonna uh become uh, actually effective you don't know what's gonna happen with that so it's good to you know have, have some have some support you know that'd be awesome yeah mm-hmm. for that for that time yes right and if you want to donate to your ramona's gofundme i just put it on the screen and it's in the notes it'll okay. go into the notes on the youtube when it's up so people can support what you're doing and you know help spread that vegan message that you can do this Mm -hmm. be successful at it and be eating plants (laughs) yes yeah and also i I also help um, athletes who want to transition uh into uh veganism uh gradually to help them with their um other with this performance, recovery. So I do vegan coaching online, you know, to, to athletes who want to transition. And also for people who just want to make a change, uh, whether they're athlete or not. So I, I do provide those services. I work with them in Zoom, online, and, you know, they, to help them um, to gradually achieve what they need to, to, to go after. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's cool. We'll definitely post a link about that in a little while, how people can reach out to you to be coached. And one of the things I saw with one of your handles is, was it raw vegan athlete? Yes. That's my, um, my Twitter account. Yes. I, I, you know, I like being raw. I like um, being fruitarian and I like being cooked vegan. So I like, I do, I'm like a hybrid of all of them, you know, put it that, um, put it that way. I like, um, I think doing cleanses. I, I did a, a cleanse with Perfect Foods with Rebecca um, Maxwell. Um, they are based upstate uh, New York, and you know I do you know cleanses every so often, especially during a transition of the, the seasons, which is which is good too. And uh, I do juice. I try to juice at least once a week of some type of that I can. You know I do that, balance it out, and it's just you know having that. Um, the balance. Food is important, but it's also other parts of your lifestyle, uh, doing other things besides just weightlifting. You know, so I, I do hike sometimes, you know, I, you know, I do swimming if I can, depending where I want to do it at, I do that. So, and I've done uh, some beginning level skiing. Oh. So that was fun. So it's good to, um, your body, if your body is doing the same thing over and over and over again, you know, I can recover, I can do this and that, I, you know, just to prevent, you know, just to avoid kind of reduced injury, I try to trick my body, but, you know, gradually. So that's the way, 
you know, doing things. So I do a lot of, do cardio, um, cardio with uh, high intensity cardio. For low intensity cardio, I might do hula hooping because I do hula hooping as well as a way to further enhance, you know, things. And uh, yeah. <laughs> you you just grab your hula hoop and just yeah, start just start moving and you start swiggling, moving. swiggling your hips. <laughs> so it's, it's a, that's a, also a form of meditation, and I do meditation. I do some yoga. I do uh, mobility. I have a, a mobility coach that I that I uh, zoom with um, twice a week for an hour and a half or so. So I do you know different things to keep myself mobile and just plain walking. You know, just walking too. You know, being out in nature, that's, 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 you know, definitely important. <laughs> There's, you, you sound so well-rounded and I love the fact that you, you do more and you basically what you're saying to people is this is how you stay fit and healthy and you avoid injury because you're not doing repetitive the repetitive motions of doing the same thing over and over and over will injure yourself. So you need to, you need to mix it up plus boredom. So you need, you need to mix it up so that your, all of your body is in shape and not just the parts that you use to do the lifting. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Cause you don't want to burn out. People do burn out from different things that you want to, if you want to keep it going, you know, just have, you know, Within, within moderation as well, you know, and just balancing out. And, you know, when it's off season, I have, you know, I could do more variety when I'm in the season, then, you know, have to, you know, balance it out too as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about what else do you do? I mean, work wise, yeah. personal wise, like, yeah, is this, exactly. it, there's more yeah. to you than just power than the lifting, right? <laughs> I, did, I did compete in one powerlifting competition, believe it or not. That's, that was very fun. It was so different from Olympic weightlifting, but it, it was definitely fun, and I enjoyed the competition, and it was great. I won, which is good, you know. <laughs> good. Um, but um, yeah, it's I have a, a tutoring uh, a service. I've been, you know, in education, uh, practically all my life, being valedictorian, having good grades, and you know, being a teacher, being an being an administrator. And I said, you know, around this COVID time, you know, last year when it first, you know, started, I said, I need to, you know, I want to maximize my time where I'm not going to be so overly consumed with my job. And I love working with kids and I, I enjoy um, uh, giving them that, that academic advantage. And so, and I always had my, always been tutoring, but just to, just to create into a business, is, is 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 definitely you know definitely the case. So I've, I mean, I've been I've had the business you know on and off you know, but since you know COVID and everything, it's it's been even stronger because mm -hmm. I feel that I could you know work with kids uh, online and in person too sometimes depending on the COVID restrictions. And I enjoy modifying their learning where it works for them because you can't put everybody in the same basket. So I like yes. the holistic approach of learning. I know some Montessori approaches. I know some, you know, Waldorf approaches of learning. So I've been in public schools and private schools and very versatile and the pre-med background. And so incorporating that and motivating, further motivating my students th through their intrinsic abilities. You know, they, they ask me other things that I do. I talk about weightlifting. I don't just, you know, I don't, when I work with kids, I don't just, I don't just mention about the weightlifting that much because I don't want to, I just work with them and mold them to help them become, you know, better individuals in, in society. <laughs> I, I have a master's in education and school counseling, right? Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've been in the classroom I'm so glad what you said, you've said what you've said, because our schools tend to be more authoritarian and not all kids, well, kids really shouldn't be learning in an authoritarian type atmosphere because you've got kids that are virtu that are visual learners, oral learners, you just like 
have difficulty reading, difficulty hearing, ADHD, AD, ADD. There's so, and they're all in a classroom and they're all expected to learn exactly the same way. And the teacher, my heart goes out to teachers because one, you have to be in teacher shape. If you don't understand that, go, go teach for a day. You stand and walk all day. You don't, you don't, you don't really sit down. You just stand and walk all day and you try to figure out when you're going to go to the bathroom because you're class after class after class saying very similar things all day to all these students. And you have to, you have to like read your room and you have to take care of these kids because you want them all to learn and you can't just teach the same thing the same way to all of them, which makes it an even harder job. But a lot of teachers don't do that and they don't have the time and they're not paid enough. I know in New York, they get paid a lot more here in North Carolina. Teachers are at the lowest, close to the lowest level of pay in the country, which is really sad. A teacher starts out here, I think at like 30 or $32,000 a year doing the same exact job as a teacher in New York who will make six figures over the course of their career. They tap, they tap out here at like 50 or 60,000 a year. You, exactly. Right. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? And that takes like 30 years. <laughs> it was like, so it takes a long time to even get there. So the, I, I get it. I, I, I love what you're saying in regards to teaching children and how important it is. And I, granted, everyone signed on to talk about like, you know, Olympics and, and weightlifting and athlete, but the fact that you're taking care of kids and teaching them the way they need to learn that to me just blows all that you know great you're I'm, I'm so glad you're a vegan athlete but you're changing the world by helping well, the kids with my service it's, it's, it's more like academic coaching i don't know if they're really tutoring because an academic coach is someone who's gonna not just work with them with the academics but further motivate them and uh, connect with the teaching staff and provide them with, with resources um that are unlimited. So I don't just limit my sessions just for that moment. It's a holistic approach. And I also work with homeschooling our family as well, online and uh, not just here in Long Island, but I have people, you know, all over that. And in my team, I have a team of, of professionals that, I, that, that are doing well and they enjoy their transition in their life too as well. That's amazing. And what, what are you, are, are you every subject? Are you specialized? Yeah, I, yeah most, 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 we have different people for different specialties, for different specializations. Yes. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So we definitely need to promote that. Yeah, especially I, I, now, especially now with COVID, what, I mean, as soon as the schools went virtual, a lot of parents started saying, help, help. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the white flag is up, like, I mean, mm -hmm. you, you, and, and plus, like, a lot of the stuff that they're teaching now, I wasn't taught. It's completely different than how I learned, and let alone the fact that there's subjects that I don't even like. I couldn't even mm -hmm. teach if I wanted to. I still, I still stick with the professional development. You know, I still uh, keep up with everything what's, what's going on. And so that's important, you know, important. And then at the same time, I cater it to the student's ability level, learning style and interest. So that makes it, makes it more, more entertaining. And I stay on top of them as a coach. Right. You know, right. Well, coach of education. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I love this. Where'd you go to college? Adelphi. I went to Adelphi University. Okay. Okay. My undergrad, a bachelor's degree in biology, a minor in math and Spanish and pre-med, and a master's in education. Okay, you were busy. <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of educating. In, yeah. in did you was it a, did you do it in four years or did you do it? Did it take five to do all those? It was four years? Four years for the undergrad. Um, undergrad and only was it like a year and a half for the masters? That was it. I was able to do it in a year and a half. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I mean, thank you for everything that you're doing because 
you know, and then you have the potential, not that I, I know you're not going in and being like, I'm vegan to these kids, but when they have, when you have the opportunity to have the conversations or you're eating something and they ask you questions, you can have dialogue with them. And that, that's another way of planting seeds of of growing healthy children is really what it is. I definitely respect the boundaries and I let things happen naturally. Yep. And I don't force people to, if they want to learn about veganism, I will give them as many resources to help them out, but I don't force people to get into anything that it, it, the time will come when it's right. Right. Lead by example. Yes. That is incredible. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I really, really am because I I have a question. We didn't really talk about what I couldn't ask, so this might go in a different direction. But how many how many how many one how many women are doing what you're doing and how many women of color are doing what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yes, um I know um you know, I I know a woman who competes in Olympic weightlifting. Her name is uh Jenny Arthur. Uh, she is a senior uh, 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 division. She's been in the, in the in the Olympics, and it's it's great to see w- women of color like herself uh, um, be successful. Someone prior to her was uh, um, Alice uh, Slaughter. She she uh, was in the also Olympics too, um, and it's great you know to see um, women of color um, prospect you know, prosper in, in these sports. Yes. Yeah. And first of all, women, women, I think it was the year, the year 2000 is when in the Olympics, when Olympic weightlifting uh, uh, for women were allowed. And it only started in 2000 for women. It wasn't, and then, you know, prior to 2000, it was all men just, you know, competing in Olympic weightlifting. Women started in 2000. So we've definitely come a long way in this sport of Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. yeah. I've, okay. I didn't know that that women. It just wasn't always a sport for men and women. So, yeah. yeah that well, you know, they catch up. Yeah. Sure. Women, yeah. Women kick ass. Yeah, we're vice president now. I. Eh? I know. Yeah. That is. It again another another seed planted in children, of what they can be. Mm-hmm. in this yes. in this world yes. yes and also i teach uh, uh my homeschooling families and people i work with them how to grow food at home oh, so really? how to make your own food too don't just depend on the grocery store to buy food so i mean tell us more about that i want to hear more about that <laughs> yeah, um just i teach them you know um how to do it and and you know it's just they they, they they're just like shocked you know, and then after that, you know, I, I show them videos. I tell them where, where they can go on their own to see things as well. Um, yeah, and also Wild Man Steve uh, uh, Brill, he's a he's a, a forager. He does a lot of foraging trips uh, for older ages, but I think it's monitored, monitored now because of the COVID. But he does. He teaches people how to. Uh, he's vegan, and he also teaches people how to how to. Um, you know, eat food from the forest and the woods and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, neat. That's really yeah. neat. I don't really think, I don't really think of Long Island as like forest. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. There are woods, but yeah. people yeah. I'm sure are watching have never been or thinking, it not it old buildings? <laughs> you know, Long Island is not old buildings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the country area for Long Island, Suffolk oh. County, which is very beautiful, you know? Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Long Island is is a very interesting mix of a lot of places that I've lived, and then mm-hmm. when you when you just go a little upstate and it's, it's New York. If if you haven't been, yeah. New York is probably yeah. one of the prettiest states in the country. Yeah. Even Central Park in New York City. I mean, God, you could forage there for food in Central Park in New York City. You know, I, there's, a, there's a there's a huge a lot of environmental benefits of learning. You know how to. Um, learn about how Central Park is what it's all about. It's the it's not just the food, it's the nature. Um, learning about animals and learning about how they interact. The whole ecosystem. 
you know, learn about the environment, global, global change, global climate. It's it's important that the the kids, you know, see the world and have, how to make inco- inter interconnections yes. between food and the environment. That is a hundred percent true. I'm gonna read to you something I wrote down earlier today when I was on a call with, with Dr. John McDougall. Because cool. I mean, I've been talking to him like like spoken to him like three times now. So I'm I'm su- super fortunate to have the connection. But I wrote down how what's on your dinner table impacts the survival of our planet. And I'm going to create something around that because we need to make the connection of what's on your plate with how it impacts the environment and the climate and this and, and keeping our planet healthy and not just our bodies healthy. Cause it's great. You can, it's great. Keep yourself healthy and exercise and, and live the longest life that you can, but you still need a planet to live on to move forward. And you want the planet to be here for the next generations yeah. whomever you are, whether it's your grandkids, your kids' kids, you know, just nieces, nephews, there's someone that you love that's going to be here after you're gone. And wouldn't it be great if the planet still existed? <laughs> yeah. So they can Absolutely. live a full life, like like hopefully all of us will. So yeah. that's, that's Dr. John McDougall's goal is to make that connection and you are doing that too by saying, you know, connect what the world is around you with what goes on your plate and how it impacts it. So yeah. that's really cool. So thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this was fun. <laughs> I, you know, and you never know where these conversations are going to go. <laughs> I like the flow. I like the flow, as they say, yeah. Right, very laid back. And and yeah. we really want everyone to learn who it's our guests are. <laughs> it's authentically relating, as they would say. Yes. Well, yeah. all right. So let's go into, there's a lot of stuff for people to, to figure out how to get in touch with you. So how would they get in touch with you for the athlete part? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, definitely you, this this whole event is being a, a broadcast, right? And I have it on my uh, social media, uh, on my Facebook and everything. And you can easily, when you Google my name, you will definitely uh, uh, find me. So it's not too hard. Um, and then um, my uh, Instagram is NY Ambassador Team Green uh, 63KG. And Facebook is is my first name, my middle name, uh, which is Adele with two L's and the E at the end with the last name I just see there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and just like I said, I'm very, very, very easy, easily accessible. Um, and, and we can, uh, the parish mes- messages me on Facebook, um, I'm updating my websites and everything. So it's, they're like a work in progress. So I'm getting that, getting that, um, you know, just uh, update it. Having someone uh, work on my uh, websites for my um, vegan uh, coaching, but uh, everything is there. And yeah, I'm on LinkedIn also, uh, you know, right on that too, as my first and last name. And Facebook, first middle name and last name. We have the Instagram there. Yeah, definitely. Um, what's, yeah. what's your website for the, t- for the coaching, for the student coaching? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I have a, that site. I'm kind of upgrading. So, but it's uh, academic tutor dot uh, dot weebly w e e b l y dot com. So academic tutor dot weebly dot com. Yeah. Um, student coaching. All right. Cool. I'm gonna make that part of this too. Yeah. You know, the thing is that I mean, like, I don't, I don't use a website uh, that much because everything is so word of mouth. Everyone gets me word of mouth with the vegan coaching, word of mouth through my tutoring. So um, I'm really grateful and fortunate for that. And yeah, I'm definitely uh, upgrading uh, my websites and everything. I po- I did a podcast uh, with Dr. Uh, Neil Bernard, uh, and yeah, yeah, I did a podcast with them. That's on my um, on my social media too as well. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, I would, I would. I would love to see you create a Facebook page for your tutoring. Yes, yes. I have, I have, I have it. Yeah, like I said, I have it. 
have it there, but it's going to just make some changes, make it um, just re remodeling it. Yeah. Under, okay. Under construction. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you have, I mean, if you have a logo or something like that, please send that to me because I would love to promote that and get, and get that out there. So you can not just influence people who want to improve their health and their athleticism, but also help any kids that don't have to be vegan kids, like any children on the, on the, on, in the country or in anywhere, I guess they speak English. Right. And I guess you can expand even further if we, when you're ready for that. I do. We do, we do it in Spanish as well. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So Mandarin too. yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you say Mandarin? Fat, uh, for Chinese and Mandarin. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're already, you're even further along that I, that I even <laughs> anticipated. So, I mean, you can clearly help a lot of kids in a lot of places and that's just it. A lot of kids need help and they needed help when they were going in-person school. A lot mm -hmm. of them need help. This type of coaching would be great for kids who are doing virtual learning and benefited from actually being in the classroom. Now, what age kids? Yeah, it's uh, pre-K to adults. Mm -hmm. Oh, and wow. Also okay. Specializing in um, organization skills, time management skills, and study skills as well. We do STEM as well, STEM and okay. STEAM, which is a higher level type of uh, way of learning. Uh, Montessori and Waldorf approaches we use too public school, private schools, mm -hmm. and also adults. That is, <laughs> you've got everything covered. You've got everything covered. Yeah, I definitely, there were definitely parents down here once like in the middle of COVID when schools went for that were like crying out for help. I reaching out and joining all those parent Facebook groups. You will, you will be busy. <laughs> You'll be so busy, and that would lead to more jobs for more people. Do you help yeah. with the yeah, coaching? Yeah, I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking to hire. Um, yeah, I have some already, but I don't. You know, maybe hire a few more teachers that would would want to uh, uh, expand their horizons or who have a similar mindset that I have in education. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. For joining yeah. me, I'm glad that you reached out to me and I was able to say, hey, just, you know, come okay. and tell everyone your story <laughs> instead of just sharing a post, <laughs> which we could do that too. But I mean, this is yeah. a, this is, this is forever. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. And I, you know, have a, have a great rest of your evening. Yeah, you too. <laughs> All right. Bye, Ramona. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Well, everyone, that definitely went in a another direction that I didn't expect and that was even better because it's also a passion of mine that kids are, you know, taught well in, in a way that they can learn. And that's very difficult for the teachers, but it's very important for the classroom. So, I mean... I highly encourage you to get in touch with her and her team if your child needs tutoring, coaching, educational coaching. Uh, that's incredible. And of course, if you're looking into powerlifting, go for it. So here we go. Wear a mask over your nose, under your chin. Make sure you wear a mask when you go out and you're around other people, if, especially if you go inside. This type of mask, probably not even good enough anymore. You need to get like an N95 mask and... They're even saying a 95 mask and one of these masks wear those because that new version of COVID is way more contagious and you know, you have to act like everyone has it. So just either don't be around people, but if you have to be around people, make sure that you mask up, social distance, be smart and get takeout help and support our vegan and plant-based friendly and vegan plant-based restaurants so they can get through this pandemic and we can go eat at those restaurants when we get through this, which, you know, maybe this year, but probably next year, we'll be able to sit down in a restaurant again. So if you have the means to go and buy takeout, go to food trucks and pick up food, please do. Next week, so excited about next week. Well, I'm always excited, but next week, Sergeant Bill Muir, a vegan, the vegan sergeant, is going to be on on Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then on Sunday, the 31st, 
we're going to have Carrie LeBlanc, who is the organizer of the Las Vegas Veg Fest. And she also has a nonprofit. She helps to save elephants. She's like awesome too. So that's what we have coming up. Subscribe to Virtual Veg Fest on YouTube. Go shop our vendors. Support our non support our nonprofit, which is Triangle Veg Fest. And we will see you next week. Have a great rest of your weekend. And don't forget to enter our raffle copter. Bye everyone. <laughs>